advanced glycation end products in the pathophysiology of angiopathies in type 2 diabetes. Diabetes is a disease of altered chemistry and metabolism of both carbohydrates and lipids. Normally, the absorption of carbohydrates stimulates insulin secretion in the translocation of glucose transporter 4 from muscle and adipose tissues intracellular compartments to the cell surface, in order to increase cellular uptake of glucose. The hormone insulin acts as a second messenger, that activates several cell signaling pathways, from the cell's membrane to the transcriptional component in the nucleus. A few of these signaling pathways include the renin-angiotensin system, phospholipase C, adenylate cyclase, and phosphoinositide 3 kinase. Each signaling pathway communicates downstream to the cell's nucleus that affects DNA, RNA and protein synthesis. Insulin signaling then, induces changes on, gene expression, activation of particular enzymes, and translocation of glucose transporters. Insulin resistance in type 2 diabetes, is a post-binding abnormality in which skeletal muscle and adipose tissues normal response to insulin is interrupted. Consequently, Glucose transporter 4 remains in the cell's intracellular compartments, and the in return causes an increase in the amount of glucose in the blood. The Diabetes Control and Complications Trials and the UK Prospective Diabetes Study, along with follow-up studies by the Epidemiology of Diabetes Intervention and Complications Study point towards hyperglycemia as the cathartic measure in the progression of tissue damage in diabetes vascular diseases, even though they may occur concurrently with other complications, such as dyslipidemia and hypertension. Data from these trials indicated that as hemoglobin A1c increases from 5.5 to 9.5 percent, that the risk of microvascular disease increases approximately tenfold, whereas risk of macro disease increases twofold suggesting that other factors may be involved in the development of diabetic macrovascular disease. Let's look at each of these factors, specifically, how insulin resistance influences both carbohydrate and lipid metabolism in the development of diabetic complications. Due to muscle and adipose tissues insensitivity to insulin, the pancreas secretes more insulin in efforts to maintain blood glucose levels, while adipose tissue releases free fatty acids, the net result is elevated fasting blood glucose levels and increased triacylglycerol synthesis in the liver. Hyperglycemia bathes every cell type throughout the body. Consequently, what we see in type 2 diabetes is that cells that are unable to decrease the rate of glucose transported inside the cell become damaged. We see this specifically in three cell types, the capillary endothelial cells in the retina, the mesangial cells in the renal glomerulus, and the neurons and Schwann cells in peripheral nerves, collectively representing microvascular complications evidenced in diabetes, retinopathy, nephropathy, and neuropathy. Hyperglycemia increases several metabolic pathways in these cell types that alter the cell's ability to scavenge intracellular reactive oxygen species, cause blood flow abnormalities, and initiate pathologic modifications to gene expression. These pathways include increased polyol or aldose reductase pathway, increased protein kinase C activity, increased hexosamine pathway and increased production of reactive carbonyl, methylglyoxal. Insulin resistance also plays a pivotal role in the development of macrovascular diseases, the leading cause of morbidity and mortality in diabetes. As previously mentioned, 
The increase of free fatty acids from adipose tissue promotes enhanced triglycerides and very low-density lipoprotein cholesterol synthesis. As a result, HDL cholesterol levels decrease and LDL cholesterol concentration increases, a metabolic disorder called hyperlipidemia. Clinically, hyperlipidemia is when triglycerides are greater than 150 mg per deciliter. Low-density lipoprotein increases to greater than 130 mg per deciliter. High-density lipoproteins decrease to less than 40 mg per deciliter, and total cholesterol increases to greater than 200 mmol per liter. Nevertheless, oxidized LDL forms early atherosclerotic lesions called foam cells after being taken up by scavenger receptor macrophages in the vessel wall, ultimately leading to cholesterolester accumulation, also known as fatty streaks, and arterial insufficiency, characteristics evidenced in macrovascular complications. The increased flux and oxidation of both glucose and lipids has two consequences, the increased formation of intracellular reactive oxygen species, and, the increased formation of advanced glycation end products. The increased oxidation of glucose and lipids provides excess electron donors, NADH and FADH, too, for the mitochondrial membrane's electron transport chain to undergo oxidative phosphorylation and generate the cell's energy currency, adenosine triphosphate. In order for ATP generation to remain constant, electrons are leaked from various complexes in the electron transport chain, donating their electrons to molecular oxygen, and thereby generating reactive oxygen species. Overproduction of reactive oxygen species inhibits two major rate-limiting enzymes, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase in glycolysis and glyceraldehyde 6-phosphate dehydrogenase in the pentose phosphate pathway. Consequently, this decreases the production of reducing equivalent in ADPH, which is needed for glutathione peroxidase and glutathione reductase reactions. As a result, the cell's natural antioxidant defense system is unable to degrade reactive oxygen species to water and oxygen. The increased oxidation of glucose and lipids also increases the formation of advanced glycation end products through a variety of mechanisms. First, AGEs, or glycotoxins, are modification of proteins and lipids that become glycated and oxidized through a non-enzymatic reaction with reducing sugars. Reducing sugars are monosaccharides such as glucose, fructose, and galactose whose functional carbonyl group is either an aldehyde or ketone. The formation of AGE spontaneously occurs when the unpaired electrons from the amine group, which are found on proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids, are transferred to the carbon of the reducing sugar's aldehyde or ketone carbonyl group, creating a temporary shift base and the amidori product, which is then oxidized to form an irreversible AGE. AGE formation occurs naturally in the body as a part of the aging process, however, its formation is accelerated in diabetes due to the increased availability of reducing sugars. Currently, the primary AGE studied is carboxymethylysine. This AGE can be formed through glycoxidation, autoxidation of glucose, or the polio pathway when intracellular glucose levels are elevated from carbohydrate metabolism, or through lipid peroxidation from increased oxidation of fatty acids and LDLs. Each of these mechanisms has a central AGE precursor in common, the reactive carbonyl glyoxyl. A buildup of these reactive carbonyls is sometimes referred to as carbonyl stress. Once formed, AGEs may bind to its receptor on the cell membrane, or glycate extracellular proteins. The receptor for AGEs is minimally expressed in normal tissue, however, 
is significantly upregulated in cell types that are unable to reduce the rate of the glucose transported inside the cell, and in vascular tissue that experiences increased concentrations of reactive oxygen species. AGE's binding to its receptor activates pro-inflammatory cytokines and initiates a positive feedback loop that triggers increased rage expression and chronic cellular activation, disrupting normal cell function. AGEs in the extracellular matrix form cross-links with other proteins, which trap other molecules that causes vascular stiffness and permanent dysfunction in cell growth and secretory functions. AGEs binding to its receptor combined with excessive glycation of extracellular matrix proteins permanently alters the cell structure and function, resulting in blood flow abnormalities, vascular permeability, angiogenesis, capillary occlusion, vascular occlusion, pro-inflammatory gene expression, and increased production of reactive oxygen species. As the formation of AGEs increase, they accumulate in both serum and in skin. Accumulation of AGEs in serum is indicated by elevated concentrations of glycated carrier proteins, such as glycated hemoglobin, albumin, LDL, apolipoproteins, and fibrinogen. Elevated serum accumulation of AGEs has been evidenced in peripheral and autonomic neuropathy, atherosclerosis and myocardial infarction, and precedes early signs of renal disease. It is also considered nephrotoxic, alters renal hemodynamics, and stimulates inflammatory processes, not to mention that it has been demonstrated to be a strong predictor for heart failure. Likewise. Skin accumulation of AGEs has been demonstrated to correlate with degree of neuropathic foot ulceration, an independent predictor for progression of microvascular complications, an independent predictor of acute myocardial infarction, delays wound healing, and may predict risk of future diabetic complications independent of hemoglobin A1C. Clinically. Since the accumulation of AGEs are dependent on the half-life of the protein, blood and urine samples of AGEs may not reflect levels of AGEs in tissues. Inhibiting AGE formation or the binding of AGEs to its receptor is important for clinical and therapeutic strategies. For example, administration of AGE inhibitor aminoguanidine demonstrated a slower reduction in glomerular filtration rate, reduced 24-hour proteinuria, and slower progression of retinopathy, as well as commonly prescribed type 2 diabetes hyperglycemic reducing medications, metformin and pioglitazone, have been shown to prevent AGE formation, in vitro. However, many of these agents are still under investigation, both in animal studies and human trials. Up to this point, accelerated AGE formation and accumulation in diabetes has been demonstrated to activate inflammatory and prooxidant mechanisms, impair cell signaling pathways, accumulate inside and outside the cell, and alter cellular structure and function, apart from overnutrition or genetic susceptibility. In addition to AGEs that are formed endogenously, the modern diet represents an important exogenous source of AGEs, most notably, diet-derived AGEs analogously contribute to the whole body AGE pool and AGE-related disease pathologies. Exploring the formation of AGEs in various types of foods, including suggestions on reducing these glycotoxins in the diet are described in the section, Dietary Advanced Glycation and Products. End of this section.